very difficult to be a really wonderful whole parent to a child if you can't parent the child that's inside of you. And many of us are not very good parents to ourselves. Because there's a little girl and a little boy inside every one of us who's wanting to be parented and who wants recognition, who wants this dream, who wants to be seen and wants to be heard, who wants to be acknowledged. So the very first thing that a parent does to parent themselves is says, ask themselves, what is my purpose in life? Yes, of course, one of my main purposes is to make sure that I take care of this child. But I'm, I'm a person. I have a dream. I have a vision. And if I don't, I better find it. Because to go through the world, the world without a dream, without being driven by something that makes you get out of bed in the morning because you are just wanting to take the next step towards this incredible dream. That's a huge missing piece in it's parenting yourself. And that's how I parent myself. However, when I parent myself in that way, guess what happens? My kids see me as a person who has a dream. They see me as having this energy, this motivation for life, this purpose, and I speak about my so they know I have a dream of something bigger. So guess what? They get infected by your energy. You become a role model for them. Of, of a mommy or a daddy or a grandpa or grandma who's living a dream and that's what I'm going to do when I'm bigger. And you speak about their dreams to them. So what are you dreaming about? This is my dream. And it's going to take me a long time to get there but I'm taking steps every day. What is your dream? And so they learn about this power, incredible, incredible power of having a dream that magnetizes them forward and gives them a purpose, and gives them a sense of doing something larger with their lives. So that's one way that a parent parents themselves. Another way in which you would parent yourself is to listen to your inner voice. That little girl, that little boy inside of us, oh my gosh, so, so smart. That's where all your wisdom lives. But what do we do when we're rushing around, when we're stressed and we're just too much pressure? That. No time, no time to, but I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm too busy now. And we don't listen to that inner voice. And I ask you, would you do that to your real children? Would you tell them like, I don't want to hear it? And of course you wouldn't. You, you, I know you, the kind of parents who listen to your kids. They want to tell you something. You listen. So why are we all so unkind to ourselves where we don't listen to our own inner voice? where all our wisdom is, where we know the answers to our problems, that inner voice will give you the answers. <coughs> so a good way to parent yourself is to listen to your inner voice. Now you have this incredible dream of why you came to this world in the first place, what you can contribute to it. And your inner voice is working with you. And your brain is helping you because it's pumping the right chemistry. And you have the energy to keep moving in the most incredibly powerful, motivated way. Another way in which you can parent yourself is by being kind to yourself, having compassion for yourself. Another way in which you can parent yourself is by being kind to yourself, having compassion for yourself. We really are so hard on ourselves. And the question is, if you're one of the people who beats yourself up all the time, ask yourself, would you do that to your real kids? Certainly you would not. You would not be telling them that's not good enough, you're not smart enough, 
um, your butt is wrong, you're not getting it right, all these negative beliefs that we have in our heads about ourselves. You don't do that to your real child. Why are we doing it to ourselves? And the issue is, if you're walking around with some negative beliefs about yourself, your kids will know it. No way you can hide it. No way you can hide it. Especially your kids, kids on the spectrum. Unbelievably perceptive and sensitive and in tune and picking it all up at some very subtle level. They know it. If they had the language, which they obviously don't, they would tell you things about yourself that would make you sit up and go, oh my gosh. How did he know that? How did she know that? They know everything about you. They just don't have the words. It's not in their consciousness until they become teenagers, and then of course they know everything. <laughs> But um, it's not in their consciousness, it, it's in their body. Your beliefs about yourself are in their body. I think that's, isn't that an incredible responsibility we have? To clean up our own acts? <laughs>